Richard Carapaz with a big attack testing Vingegaard in the livery of EF Education. Easy post. Would that be enough to trouble the Dane? This was a puncher style stage with two climbs of note, but the last one crests about 15 k's from the finish. They're not difficult climbs, especially the first one, 2 k's, 6%. We were kind of expecting Alaphilippe or a puncher to win the stage. The last one could the Tezis, 3.5 k's, 8.5%. And Quickstep were indeed pacing, chasing the break all day, setting a fierce pace with three Stevenines. They got help from UAE, who were trying to defend the yellow jersey of Mikael Björk, hoping he would keep it. And a strong break with Zimmermann, De Gent, Bosenhagen, Nils Pollitt, and yeah, six riders pulling pretty hard were difficult to bring back, but the climbs did for them, particularly with Bahrain helping, I assume maybe for Fred Wright. But here's the first climb coming up, and this gap just melts. Quickstep were pacing, it was 150, and then EF come to the front. I think with Andrea Piccolo, who scored so many UCI points for them when they signed in mid-year last year, he looks like a skinny, like longer version of, taller version of Uran. He just absolutely shreds this climb. So we're thinking, mm, it's a bit too hard for Sean Quinn, the way he's pacing. So I would think it's for Richard Carapaz on the last climb. They're putting some, some work into the legs. But then on the plateau between the climbs, the gap went back out again uh, to the breakaway. But Fred Wright. Does this tip this stage for him and Bjerg into just too difficult a territory rather than just the last climb? And here we're coming up to the descent, straight descent into the final climb. And so the GC teams start to get the elbows out and fight for position to keep their leader safe and importantly get him into that climb in the best position possible. So Jumbo Visma obviously have two super rulers in Laporte and Van Hoydonk shepherding Vingegaard, but he actually loses the wheel of Van Hoydonk here uh, with about 20 k's to go. And then you can see him shortly afterwards, knowing that position on that final climb is so important, furiously fighting to get back in the wheel, coming up to the left of Carapaz, almost getting squeezed there. Um, so yeah. Obviously, here's the right-hand turn. It's a slow right-hand turn. So 3.6 Ks, 8.8%. With the first 2 Ks at 10%, you want to be in good position. And Vingegaard was with Van Hoydonk shepherding him. But Bagioli just absolutely sparks it. And here you can see the difference, right? Vingegaard starts in good position. Haig is deeper in the field. And Hinley and Chavez are kind of midfield. O'Connor and Mars are in not too bad a position, maybe 10 wheels. But they're still behind other riders who are going to drop, like Sweeney or James Shaw, who I think had just had a dig. So position in, when these climbs get launched is really important. And Björk found that out, going the long way. And then I don't know if he pedal stroke or hit some water or something, but he crashed. And any chance he had of keeping the jersey was gone at that point. But the pace of Bagioli wasn't enough for Carapaz. He jumps really hard with about 3Ks to go on the climb. Hinley and O'Connor can't respond immediately. Alaphilippe and Vingegaard are in his wheel. And you see O'Connor's just behind that group, but not quite on the wheel. So, you know, if he enters the climb on Carapaz's wheel, he maybe he makes it into this group. But he's left there dangling, and Carapaz goes again after Alaphilippe was pacing with a big attack because he actually puts Vingegaard initially on a, a little bit of a gap who then closes more gradually back to his wheel. Alaphilippe can't go with it, just too long and too hard a pace on the steep gradients. And let's look at the damage behind. I'm looking, where's Jorgensen? He's dropped. It's just Mars today on a better day for Movistar. Where's Ineos? Is Martinez dropped? He would. Godou, Mar uh, Lenny Martinez. Godou would lose time. So big, big action on even a nine and a half minute climb. And Carapaz starts to slow down a little bit. He's attacked about a K, 1.1 Ks ago. Vingegaard hasn't taken a pull yet until here Carapaz asks him to relay. The group behind has got a lot closer or it's held the gap stable and they're starting to pull with Chikone and Mars. and Vingegaard gives him initially a bit of a pull, probably at the same pace that Carapaz was initially pulling at. And then Carapaz goes back to the front for a little bit, maybe 150 metres before Vingegaard pulls again and suddenly he's gone. Vingegaard says, well, it wasn't the plan, but if you insist, I would like to keep on going the same pace we started this climb at. And he takes that gap out from 18 to 24 to 30 seconds very, very quickly, even though the final part of this climb is still pretty difficult, but it's not as steep as the first two kilometers. And then in the group behind, Adam Yates was sort of pacing, setting his own rhythm 32 seconds behind, but 
He prefers that everyone waits for Micah to pull. And they get to the top of the climb. Cross tailwind for Vingegaard. Super aero position and setup. We saw that in Bass Country, actually, when he went solo on one of those stages. And across the top of the crest, yeah, okay, 14 k to go. Look at the size of this group. How are they not going to bring him back? Well, right now he's pacing against Micah, who's already dropped and is quicker than on the flat. So Micah's not going to put any time to him. At best, he can hope to hold the gap stable. Carapaz dropped himself from that second group. And then Yates is pulling again with the little pickup before the descent. And then it's Trek Segafredo with, I think, Juan for Chicone. He's also not going to descend much faster than Vingegaard. So without all the other guys rolling through, and there's not much terrain which suited it too much, Vingegaard was riding away easily with this. And you see that there's not too much cooperation in the group. Martinez has dropped, Bernal's isolated, a lot of riders don't have teammates, and frankly... They're already thinking about second on GC. And even if they do bring him back, Vingegaard, Alaphilippe's just going to beat them in a sprint for the stage. So why would you bring him back and maybe flick yourself on GC and lose more time? Bernard goes on to, on the attack. Love to see it, uh, but it doesn't go anywhere. So the only question is, does Vingegaard crash or not in the descent, which wasn't that long? And the answer was no. So just like in Basque Country, on another level, even in medium mountain terrain. O'Connor did have a mechanical, but he'd be credited with the same time. And Vigar wins Yumbo's third stage of the Dauphiné with Alphalete winning the sprint for second. Dominant from Vingegaard, pretty foreboding for his rivals in the actual mountains <laughs> this weekend, taking a 31-second lead on most of those GC rivals, and now with a lead of over 124 on O'Connor, the next serious GC rider. So unless he has some big issue in the mountains... GC is looking pretty sewn up. Here's what he had to say after the stage. Well, yes, that was a, a sweet revenge after uh, your second position yesterday on the on the time trial. That, that's what you wanted to, to hit back. Uh, no, actually, I didn't want to uh, to attack today. I just wanted to uh, to defend myself, and uh, yeah, then they attacked, and uh, I I. I uh, yeah, I was working with uh, Richard, and uh, then then he he couldn't follow anymore. Because, I mean, everybody's expecting the big battles to be on Saturday and Sunday. Already on this Thursday stage, you've made big differences on your main opponents. You must be satisfied. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm of course very very happy with um, yeah with the win today. But I think on a day like today, with uh, with what happened in Annecy, it's. Uh, doesn't really matter with cycling. Uh, yeah, it's uh, my thoughts are with all the families. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to go watch the Netflix Tour de France Unchained series now. I'm going to binge those episodes this evening, and I'll see you with the recap of Stage Six tomorrow. Ciao.